light on the south today. The Dunedin Wildlife Hospital gets a visit from the Conservation Minister alongside hopes of change. Cantabrians are eager to see what Kiwi artists are putting on display at the Sculpture Festival. And Dunedin filmmakers are causing a stir across the ditch with their music video. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Conservation Minister Potu Williams has made a visit to Dunedin, a tiki tour focusing on environmental action. Williams stopped by the Dunedin Wildlife Hospital to learn more about the changes faced by the facility. Meeting one of Dunedin Wildlife Hospital's two-legged patients. Conservation Minister Porto Williams checked into the hospital as part of a day to the city, learning about the facility's work, its staff and the range of wildlife it rescues. Williams' visit was part of a nationwide tour for Conservation Week, spreading a simple but important message. Do what I can to promote uh, the theme of Conservation Week, which is even small acts of conservation are important. We want to get everybody involved in conservation, so to do what you can. The Wildlife Hospital treats many of the region's native species and is currently nursing a kereru back to full health. Williams says we shouldn't underestimate their role in the ecosystem. Birds are bosses. If we can create the environment where our birds are thriving, I think we're going a long way to creating an environment where all of our biodiversity has got a chance to survive. The hospital currently relies on one-off yearly funding and volunteer drives to continue operating. But that's something Williams is hoping to address. Given that this is the only uh, hospital of its kind, here in the wildlife capital of New Zealand, um, as you say, it's a really important thing to continue to support. So, you know, we're here having those discussions so that I can take that away with me when we're um, making those decisions later in the year. The minister is leaving Dunedin to head north to cap off the end of Conservation Week. In Dunedin, the south today. The government is set to decide on Monday whether to scrap the nationwide traffic light system and other official COVID-19 measures. It's a decision which could see the remaining restrictions, including mask mandates, gone by next Wednesday, ending more than two years of strict COVID rules. It's understood Cabinet will meet on Monday to discuss a recommendation to scrap the traffic light system altogether, rather than just tweaking the settings or moving to green. If Cabinet does give the proposal the go-ahead, COVID-19 is likely to be treated in a similar way to how the common flu is managed. One of the biggest drug busts ever seen in Ashburton has led to more than 160 charges against 18 people, mainly associated with the mongrel mob. Police say Operation Mastiff involved more than 100 officers from Ashburton, Timaru and Christchurch. Members of the Armed Defenders Squad were also fully kitted up and ready to assist. Police say a series of search warrants were executed in the area this week, dealing a huge blow to the methamphetamine trade and those involved. Among those arrested is a man who faces more than 60 charges of supplying methamphetamine. Local body election season is in full swing and here at Channel 39 we're bringing you coverage of the people standing for the top job, Dunedin's Mayor. You can meet all 11 candidates competing for your vote this election in our two-part special, Meet the Mayors 2022. Join myself and Dave Gooselink tonight at 7.30pm here on Channel 39 as we get to learn more about the candidates and assess whether they're the right person for the job. We've also been hitting the streets to see what issues you, the public, think the city is facing. Both one-hour episodes are also available to watch on demand at odt.co.nz forward slash features. And we'll repeat here on Channel 39 at 7pm on Saturday. Hundreds of Cantabrians have flocked to the Arts Centre to view works by a number of prominent New Zealand artists. The event was the annual Sculpture Festival, which showcased jewellery, ceramics and Iwamaru stone sculptures. Mallets, chisels and stone featured among the artworks at this year's Sculpture Festival in Christchurch. Works by a number of well-known and emerging New Zealand artists are on display at the Arts Centre. Among them is sculptor Ruth Kaloran, who says she finds her inspiration in the stone. The stone has a beauty all of its own and all you're doing is taking away material for it to become a form that is pleasing 
and as long as it's pleasing to me, then I, I'm happy. Around 40 artists exhibited their work, a record for the festival, with more than 300 pieces for sale. The first festival was held at the Art Centre three years ago, with interest steadily increasing since then. I want the challenge, to have a challenge, and that's also when we decide some kind of exhibition, but something slightly different from the others. The success of this year's festival has a team already dreaming bigger and better for the 2023 event. The Sculpture Festival continues every day until Friday the 16th of September. In Christchurch, the South Today. A pair of Dunedin filmmakers have found international success thanks to a music video shot in the heart of the city. The clip, filmed for Southern performer Jenny Mitchell's song Somehow, is making waves across the ditch. Filmmakers Braden McCoyhe and Wade McClellan at the Nerve Centre producing video for a host of clients. The pair run the Dunedin film studio Scrambler, whose music video for Southern musician Jenny Mitchell netted them an unexpected award surprising the pair when they travelled to the awards ceremony in Australia. Yeah, we, we were just there for a good night, to be honest, and to enjoy the, uh, the, free, the free food and beverage. And um, it was uh, absolutely mind-blowing to um, actually receive runner-up and, um, and come away with the trophy and um, a bit of recognition, I suppose. So. Their effort placing second at the Sony Catchlight Film Festival in Sydney. The video is for Mitchell's song Somehow and features choreographer and dancer Natalie Exeter. McCoy, he says her interpretation of Mitchell's lyrics became a central part of the video. We kind of worked in the camera movement and the lighting and everything around kind of what she had put together. So it was definitely a team effort. It wasn't just, you know, shoot a video and it works out well. It was a lot of, lot of work before the shoot to, to pull it off. The commended video sees Exeter dancing to Mitchell's country music in the dimly lit Ateneum Theatre, depicting struggles with mental health. The self-taught filmmakers decided to join together and set up the studio earlier this year. The pair are blown away by the Sony Corporation's response to their video. In Dunedin, the South Today. FA Yagane, still to come on the South Today. The Gore ice rink thaws out, resembling the pools next door before being refrozen. And a skiff of the world's best free ride athletes hit the slopes in the Southern Lakes. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Just get down to John's this weekend. His catalogue's out now, full of great deals on rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds. Plus, pay it off over 18 months interest free. And my mate John. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
Tēnā koe, welcome back. Undergoing a complete meltdown is not always a good thing, but in the case of Gore's ice rink, it's a necessary event in order to relay the ice with a new smooth surface. A last spin on the ice before the rink goes into complete meltdown. The Gore ice rink is undergoing maintenance, meaning it will be closed until about February so that the rink can be re-iced. Much of the next five months will be spent waiting for the ice to melt. Ice Sports Southland President Robin Morris says the new surface will be much smoother, with the current rink a little bumpy due to many years of gradual frost heave. Ideally you would melt the rink um, every two years, but because it hasn't been done for six years now, it needs quite a bit of work to give it a really good meltdown. The closure means a change to the annual calendar for Ice Sports Southland figure skaters who chose to perform their end of year routines early before the rink was shut down. Normally we would do an ice show in December sometime at the end of the competitive season but this year because of our close down we decided to put on a gala um, earlier in the year. The Gore rink is also popular with ice hockey players and curling teams. It will take volunteers many hours to relay the rink, building up the ice level one millimetre at a time. The rink is set to reopen in about February. In Gore, the South today. Some of the world's best free ride athletes hit the remarkable slopes today as they competed for the top spot. The North Face Frontier four-star competition saw 50 free riders descend the wild Ulta Chutes slopes. Sanctioned as a free ride world qualifier tour competition, the events helped launch the international careers of some of New Zealand's best free ride athletes. Three women landed backflips in the final of the women's ski competition, which is a world first for events at this level. Local woman Jess Halter, uh, slightly smoking the competition to take out the top spot. America's Kelsey Whittles was this close second, while another Kiwi, Jessie Violet, came third. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. The Conservation Minister has been in Dunedin visiting the Wildlife Hospital, bringing promises of positive change. Cantabrians are eager to see what Kiwi artists are putting on display at the Sculpture Festival. And Dunedin filmmakers cause a stir across the ditch with their music video for Southerner Jenny Mitchell. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome the Associate Editor, Jo Simpson. Kia ora Jo. Hi. What can we expect in your paper tomorrow? Uh, the Southern District Council says a proposal to build Southland's largest dairy bun complex in the doorstep of Fjordland National Park should not go ahead. Okay. And class actors in town. Yes. So we have um, an interview with Jacinda today and Mike talks to her about the hospital, Polytech and COVID. Fantastic. Oh, we look forward to that full wrap and the photos. Great. Thanks Thank Jo. You. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, frosty nights inland for the next few days, but areas of low cloud and fog about the Otago coast. Temperatures become milder on Sunday. Heading to the top of the South Island, some cloud and light winds up through here tomorrow. 14 for Nelson and Greymouth and 13 down in Christchurch. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, light winds and cloud continue through here. Ashburton and Timaru head for 13, while Awamaru gets some fog and a high of 12. Westwards now to the Central Lakes, more fog and light winds as we make our way through here next. Wanaka and Alex get up to 14, while Queenstown's high will be 13. Heading further south, fine with light winds after a chilly morning. Valclutha, Gore and the Catlins will all head for a fine 13 degrees. Now down to the deep south. Fine and frosty tonight in Invercargill, down to zero. Mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with light winds for the next two days actually, with cold nights and pleasant days and highs of 14 degrees. 
And lastly, heading to Dunedin. Cold and foggy tonight with a low of four. Into Friday and Saturday, it's looking fine with low cloud in the mornings and easterlies during the day. Expect highs of 13 degrees. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And just a reminder to also join us again tonight from 7.30 for our local body election special, meeting the candidates standing to be the next Mayor of Dunedin. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.